Howdy folks, welcome to another edition of Ideas and Images. I'm Willard Gellis. Howdy folks, welcome and as to another usual, edition we have a very of special Ideas and Images. guest for you. I'm Willard Dave Gellis, a performance artist. And as per from usual, Baltimore, have a very special Maryland guest for you, Mary a performance Mary. artist. Thank from you for Baltimore, stopping by with us, Maryland. And, Mary, uh, Mary, why don't you tell the audience for a little bit about stopping by with uh, us, your background, and uh, where you were raised? Uh, not why don't you Baltimore. tell the audience a little bit about? Oh no, I'm from uh, your the eastern background. shore of Maryland. Um, town called Chop Tank um, had a hundred people in it. It's um, on the Chop Tank River, and um, yeah, James Michener made that famous that river. It's a famous place. Mm -hmm. Been there. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I, I lived, uh, we, we, I, we had waterfront property on the Chop Tank River, two acres of land. Lived there from when I was six, six years old to when I was 18. Uh -huh. And uh, you got a little uh, biography that sounds pretty nice. Would you want to read from that, please? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I was born April 6, 1966 in a hospital on Maryland's eastern shore and given the name Mary Margaret Knotts. I was named in part after my grandmother, Margaret Knotts. I feel very proud of her. I mean, I feel very proud of the fact I was named after my grandmother, as I am very proud of her. She was a fascinating lady who came from a well-to-do family from Wilmington, Delaware. My father tells me her father, my great-grandfather, owned the land Penn Station in Baltimore was built on, or at least he owned part of that land. My grandmother, Margaret, was a socialite, and I believe a great conversationalist. She knew and visited the renowned Sophie Kerr, plus, as an older woman, when I was alive, rented an apartment in her house to Governor Harry Hughes's mother. In addition, she was famous for attending and throwing elaborate parties. She had a huge hat collection and claimed to own something like 150 hats. I used to think about changing my name to Margaret Knotts. It gives the unpleasant sounding name of Knotts a good ring. Mary is a name I like sometimes and also one I've always been called. What I don't like about it is the commonness of it. What I do like about it is the fact that it is the name of Je the name Jesus' mother had, a woman who, if the pictures and paintings are correct, I somewhat resemble. Uh, all right. I liked Mary Ma I like Mary Magdalene, who is really the whore to Mary Christ Madonna as well. I thought about using Mary Christ as a pen name. I can't remember if it was before the Sonic Youth song came out on Goo, but it was definitely before meeting or hearing about Joe Christ. I feel, however, I can't use it now because he would only think I was copying. Back to the other subject. Even though Mary Margaret's a nun's name, Margaret sounds like Magdalene a little, so I also like that. I sort of hate my last name, but I've worked rather effectively with it, making the best of it, I think. For instance, I started out by taking one of the T's out and transforming it into knots, K-N-O-T-S. That's kind of sexy, I think, cause, because it sort of alludes to bondage, which can be fun, and goes on to include a lot of terrific fashion statements. It can mean tied up in knots, which I feel a lot, <laughs> but it could also mean something like you're in bondage or shackles, and you can get out of it, like Houdini, who I incidentally share birthday with or a contortionist would. Well, actually, Houdini's birthday may be March 28th. One time when I was talking to a friend on the phone, I answered call waiting, and this demonic voice said, you are not Mary. You are not Mary. And I think they laughed. There was a lot of static on the line, and the voice <laughs> faded out. So I think it could have been some kind of supernatural experience. I mean, I asked everyone I knew if they had done it, and they said no. I used the line in several poems that I had the devil on call waiting, <laughs> and that's where it originated. That's when I started using Mary not. In other words, I am not Mary, <laughs> therefore the anti-Mary, and both God and the devil want to know me, which is okay because of the marriage of heaven and hell. 
This also works because my birth date has the number 666 in it and a four, which might be some kind of angel number. I don't know how well it went over. I did it at least three or four years ago, but I liked it. I started using Marilyn Skid Row because Marilyn is kind of like Mary, and all of the glamorous people have the O sound at the ends of their <laughs> last names. Monroe, Harlow, Bardo, Farrow, Poe. Also, Skid Row can be either anti-glamour or glamour. It leaves a lot to the imagination as well as a lot of leeway. However, I do not think everyone saw it that way. I believe I was given massive tons of shit from people because they thought I was trying to compare myself to Marilyn Monroe. Either that or say I was somebody. People don't like that around Baltimore. So we like it here. <laughs> Another name I was known for as, a short, for, as for a short time was Ava. It was a name given to me by an alcoholic neo-Nazi ex-boyfriend <laughs> who perpetually went around with a pair of handcuffs hanging from his belt loop. It kind of turned me on, I guess. He <laughs> ran it and raved how beautiful Ava Braun was and found a dark-haired photo of her that sort of looked like me. He would also tell me how beautiful I was beautiful and introduce me to everyone as Ava. Well, 